Hi everyone, this is a brief introduction to the EdgeSurf Foundation and the work that we're doing in Second Life. Now, before I say anything more about Second Life, let me just tell you a little bit about EdgeSurf and the EdgeSurf Foundation. So EdgeSurf is a UK not-for-profit charity and we work to realise the effective use of ICT for learners and researchers. By and large, that means working with the institutions that support those people. Um, so we work um, very often with higher education institutions in the UK, but we also work with further education colleges and so on, and a little bit with the school sector. And the kinds of things we do, are well, we deliver services into that community, uh, we um, make grants available for research, we do a bit of work on standards in the area of ICT, and we do some internal research and development. So those are the kinds of activities we do. Um, in terms of the services we're in, we, we deliver, we're probably best known for two things, Athens and Chest. So Athens is our access and identity management service that's been in use in the UK uh, for about the last 10 years or so, funded by the JISC. Um, but incre increasingly we have an interest in Shibboleth and the UK Access Management Federation and in helping the community to transition uh, to those um, standards for access and identity management. CHEST deals with license negotiation and brokering, so it negotiates licenses, uh, typically site licenses, to bibliographic and other kinds of data sets. We also undertake quite a lot of web hosting, not so much for the education sector directly, but certainly for the wider UK public sector, including um, e-governments, so various government departments uh, and related bodies, museums, and, and to a certain extent within education. And any money that we make through those activities then are made available through the foundation, either in the form of research grants. We also undertake some standards making activities, international standards in the area of ICT. Uh, we provide advisory services on best practice, partly through events and meetings, partly through writing briefing papers and that kind of thing. And we also make money available, seed funding services and pilots that might otherwise not get off the ground. So that's what the foundation does, and we do that broadly speaking within the areas of ICT and education, but we do have some specific interests. In particular, we're interested in repositories, metadata, open access, licensing around that particularly Creative Commons, uh, and also information literacy. Uh, we have an interest in access and identity management in line with um, EDUSERV's broader interest in Athens and Shibboleth and so on. Uh, we're interested in service architectures and, and currently in, in the whole Web 2.0 thing and what that means for learning. And then finally we have a, a general interest in e-learning but specifically we're interested in e-portfolios and more recently in Second Life. So we have an island in Second Life uh, uh, which we're gradually sort of pulling together and making use of. Uh, the island is shaped into the EDUSERV E, the logo that we have, um, and that means it contains four areas. And those four areas are set up as a conference space, an exhibition space, what we call a slash up space, and I'll say a bit more about what we mean by that in a minute, and uh, some office space. So let me talk you through those four areas. Firstly, the conference space. Well, the most obvious thing here is the Virtual Congress Centre, which is uh, based on the, on the Congress Centre in London, where we held our recent um, annual symposium. The symposium looked at the use of Second Life in learning. We streamed all the presentations from that real-world conference into Second Life, and they were brought into this Virtual Congress Centre and we also displayed a view of the virtual congress center to the real life audience and tried to get some interaction going between the two we have other sort of meeting type spaces as well we have something called the meeting pod which is quite a novel thing in second life i think it has a virtual chair so a, a bit of a, a scripted object which tries to organize the meeting and prevent people from speaking over each other uh, which is what commonly happens in Second Life meetings because it's all chat based. And we also have what we call a res on demand meeting area, three different layouts. And by clicking on a, on a white post at the side of the space, you can select one of those three layouts to use for your meeting. So that's our conference space. Exhibition space, I won't say much about. We have three exhibitions on at the moment, three different areas. We have something called Arts Place, something called the Charlotte Gallery, and something called the Avon Gallery. And there's, there's three different um, exhibitions on currently. And we hope to develop quite a nice programme of, of exhibits and exhibitions and so on, um, particularly looking at 
materials held in digital library collections and so on, um, but but maybe other stuff as well. Um, and we hope to have a, some sort of, some sort of program of exhibitions going on uh, over the next uh, months and years. Slash up space. Well, what is a slash up? A slash up is a second life mashup. So essentially, this is an area where people can play at integrating web 2.0 type services into Second Life and vice versa. Um, um, it's uh, not a public sandbox as such, it's a semi-public sandbox in the sense that you have to join the EdgeServe Slashers group uh, in order to, to play in this space. Um, and that's because we don't want it to be a general purpose sandbox. We want this area to focus specifically on integration of Web 2.0 type services with Second Life. We have a, an, an office space area, which is um, where we have our offices. So there's a big office block for EduServe staff. There's also some smaller offices that we hope to make available to interested parties in the community, not on a long term basis, but just as a place where people who are interested in Second Life can get a feel for what's going on here before they make the commitment of buying their own space. OK, I mentioned the symposium um, which took place in London uh, during May, Virtual Worlds, Real Learning, question mark. Um, a blended real life Second Life event, as I said, with speakers from Linden Lab, IBM Nature, UK Academia and Canada. All the materials, so the streamed media and the PowerPoint presentations and so on, will be being made available in due course. We're in the final stages of making that content available on the web and also reintegrating it back through Second Life. And then finally, uh, I, I said we make grants available, research grants available for projects in the UK. We funded four Second Life projects this year. Um, I'll just say a few words about each. Firstly, Sleuth, which is based at King's College London, uh, is a two-year project to build uh, 20 historic theatres in Second Life and then create some learning uh, activities around those theatres. Quite exciting, I think. A very, very, very powerful potentially very powerful bit of work I think uh, uh, for supporting learning around theatre studies and, uh, and other kinds of activities in Second Life. Second one is based at the London Knowledge Lab and is looking at um, firstly a comparison between World of Warcraft and Second Life and secondly doing some actual teaching in Second Life and making some recommendations coming out of those two bits of work. That's a 12-month project. Third thing is uh, um, around Sloodle which you've probably many of you already know about, but we're funding the development of Sloodle now, uh, a 12-month project. Um, and I think, again, that has the potential to be very, very exciting. And finally, a project uh, around modelling. So the kind of modelling you see done in social sciences or biological sciences or whatever. Uh, Web 2.0 kinds of tools to both create those models without needing to be a programmer, but also to build up social tools around those models. So annotating other people's models, tagging them and so on, uh, and then reintegrating those back into Second Life. So that's the, the, the those four projects that we're funding this year. Finally, who are we? Well, I'm Art Fossett, and my real name is Andy Powell. I'm Head of Development at the EdgeServe Foundation. Uh, there's three of us in all at the EdgeServe Foundation, so there's also Peregrine Juno, uh, also known as Pete Johnston, and Ed Camachi, also known as Ed Barker. Feel very free to get in touch with us anytime you like, either by IM in World or by emailing us. And um, if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing, then we maintain a number of blogs uh, of which the first one there, the E Foundations blog, is probably uh, the one we put most effort into. Um, so keep an eye on our blogs, and that's a good way of keeping up to date with what we're doing. So thank you very much for listening, and goodbye.